Good morning. This is Aaron with Transformed by His Truth. Today I'm going to do a video about modern day apostles and prophets. This is a really big thing with charismatics and I guess Mormons are that way as well. I know from having been an ex-charismatic that um, they do put themselves out there as apostles and prophets, which are not for today, which is just one of many things that's wrong with the charismatic movement. I have other videos about that, so if you'd like to find out more about the charismatic movement and what's wrong with it, then look at some of my videos, go to my playlist, and see um, the videos that expose these people like Kenneth Copeland and Benny Hinn and Joyce Meyer and a whole bunch of other people that are making millions and millions off of making merchandise of the body of Christ. So anyway, this is the video, um, an article from What Sayeth the Scriptures, which has been an absolute great resource. I've been doing videos on their articles here for about a week or so, and they're just so good. Um, they're explained properly and make it easy to understand these questions. Okay, so are there modern day apostles and prophets? Certain Christian groups boast of their modern day apostles and prophets. Mormons and Charismatics are two major factions. They argue that unless all five of offices are fulfilled and active today, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, Ephesians 4.11, the church, the body of Christ, cannot function properly. Thus we will hear men and even women today calling themselves apostles and prophets. Is this proper? Is it scriptural? We will look at Bible verses and let them speak. Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of, the, of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Notice verse 11, He, Jesus Christ, of verse 7, gave. Paul wrote Ephesians at the end of the Acts period when he was under house arrest, see Acts 28, 30 through 31. At the time of the Ephesians, God was not giving present tense those gifts, but rather he gave past tense those gifts. Those spiritual gifts were no longer being given to new people. The men who had those gifts were growing fewer and fewer because the gifts were no longer being given. There was something taking the place of these gifted men. Once the written word of God was completed shortly after the Acts period, there was no more need for the limited knowledge and spiritual gifts programs. It's probably hard for a lot of people to swallow, but it's true. 1 Corinthians 13, 8-13 says the following, Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. The spiritual gifts were temporary, only necessary until the full revelation from God had been given to man. Knowing in part would result in full knowledge. Prophesying in part would be replaced by full prophesying. The partial would pass away and the complete would come. All too often there is the idea that spiritual gifts are to operate indefinitely or until the Lord Jesus Christ returns. This is a theological speculation and certainly not supported by scripture. People stumble over the that which is perfect is come in verse 10. They contend that that perfect is Jesus, the perfect one, coming back to earth. An alternative view is that it is Christians dying and going to heaven. <clears throat> Both views are lacking because they do violence to the scripture, reading things into the verses that the verses simply do not say. There is nothing in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 about the Lord coming back. There is nothing in the chapter about going to heaven either. The last reference to Christ's coming in 1 Corinthians is chapter 11, verse 23. There is no mention of dying and going to heaven in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 at all. God wants us to grow up now. We should not wait for heaven until we act and think like spiritually mature people. Ephesians 4.14 says to this point that we henceforth, henceforth, from now onward, not in heaven, 
be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive how could god expect us not to be children now if we must wait until heaven to grow up see as the verse indicates that the time of maturity has arrived the perfect has already come we have a completed revelation from god in the written 66 books of the holy bible we'll we read it and think like a mature adult children of God, or will we read it and then plead ignorance of the very book we claim to have? It is important to notice what Ephesians 2, 20-22 says about apostles and prophets, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an inhabitation of God through the Spirit. These apostles and prophets are associated with Paul's ministry. They are also referred to in 1 Corinthians 12, 28-29, Romans 16, 26, 1 Corinthians 14, 37, Ephesians 3, 5. We know that these apostles and prophets are not the twelve apostles and not the Old Testament prophets because Ephesians 4, 7-11 says Jesus Christ ordained these apostles and prophets after his ascension. Ephesians 2.20 says that the apostles and prophets in the body of Christ laid a foundation. This foundation does not need to be laid indefinitely any more than a physical foundation is to be installed indeterminately. A foundation is laid once, and then a structure is built on top of it. While the offices of the apostles and prophets were necessary to lay the foundation, the foundation has already been laid. The apostles and prophets in the dispensation of grace, headed by the chief apostle and primary prophet, Paul, Saul, Acts 13, 1, 2, Romans 11, 13, preached and taught the special doctrine committed first to the Apostle Paul. The Lord Jesus Christ revealed the dispensation of grace directly to Paul, and then the Holy Spirit used Paul's ministry, teaching, preaching, and writing, to educate those apostles and prophets. Then they communicated it to the other saints of God. Notice Ephesians 3, 1-6. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy prophets and apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the, by the gospel. The prophets in the body of Christ identified and copied scripture. They wrote scripture, Romans 16, 26, the scripture of the prophets. 1 Corinthians 14, 37 says, If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. The foundation for the dispensation of grace was preached and taught first and foremost by the Apostle Paul, just as he claimed by the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, According to the grace, ministry of God, which was given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. More specifically, the foundation was Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery or secret revealed by Christ first to Paul in Romans 16, 25 and 26. The secondary apostles and prophets associated with the body of Christ bolstered and spread what God began with Paul's ministry. Their ministries continue even today, but not with new modern day apostles and prophets. Rather, their ministries are perpetuated in the sense that we already dis discussed. Their ministries continue via the written preserved word of God, the words they once preached audibly and wrote down. Those ministries sustained the body of Christ during the Acts period when there was no written and completed New Testament canon, but they have since given way to the written word. They were influential in giving us the written Bible. Now that we have the written and preserved Bible, there is no more revelation needed from God. Modern day apostles and prophets serve no purpose whatsoever because the ministry of the apostles and prophets of AD 1st century are perpetuated through the written preserved word of God. Notice in Colossians 1 24 through 28 what Paul's apostleship and ministry were designed to accomplish. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Verse 25 says Paul was made a minister in order to fulfill the word of God. Notice the word fulfill as in complete, the doctrine, dispensation, or body of truth that the resurrected, ascended, and glorified Lord Jesus Christ gave to Paul was to bring God's revelation to a completion. That is the same idea presented in 1 Corinthians 13, 8-13, which we looked at earlier in the study. The mystery, secret dispensation, the dispensations of the grace of God, Ephesians 3, 2, exposes God's secret will. What God kept hidden in himself since eternity past is now divulged in the apostles, Apostle Paul's epistles, Romans 2, Philemon. The Bible says in Ephesians 1, 8-10, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. With the doctrine God committed to the Apostle Paul, we now know the secret of God's eternal purpose. We have no need for modern-day apostles and prophets, people supposedly giving us new words from God, new insight from God. The foundation has already been laid, and there is nothing else for God to reveal to us. Friends, either we believe the Bible to be the final authority, or we disbelieve it. Either we believe Paul's ministry and revelation bring God's word to a completion, or we do not. By the way, I find it interesting that those who claim to be prophets People supposedly speaking for God today actually disregard a verse that exposes false prophets. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 14.37 says, If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. How many of today's prophets pay any attention to the special commandments of the Lord written by the Apostle Paul in Romans to Philemon? None. Even if they were prophets, they would be by the verse's standards, false prophets. The test for knowing who is speaking on behalf of God today is to see if he or she recognizes Pauline revelation, not mixing law and grace, not mixing Israel with the body of Christ, not mixing prophecy and mystery, not mixing times past with but now or the ages to come, and not mixing heaven and earth, etc. <clears throat> when someone claims to be an apostle or a prophet today, he or she is claiming to be adding to the scriptures. They deny the sufficiency of the 66 books of the Bible. They claim that their words, sermons, books, etc. are equal in authority to the Holy Bible. Heresy. They are no different from the Roman Catholic Church that claims to determine what the Bible is and what the Bible says and what the Bible means. Yes, they are no different from those who argue that the Apocrypha belong in the Bible canon. The Holy Scriptures are already written. They have been preserved for us as the King James Bible in the English-speaking word and they are enough to equip us to tell us everything that God wants us to know and equip us to do everything God wants us to do. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished into all good works. Do we believe those verses? Yeah, that's the end of that article. So if you're listening to people who call themselves modern-day prophets or apostles, you need to stop because they're not of the Lord. There are no apostles and prophets today, as we just read the article, why there aren't. So it's going to take some change on your part if you're listening to people like Kenneth Copeland, Joyce Meyer, Beth Moore, or any of these new, um, new apostolic reformation teachers. They're just full of baloney. They are propping themselves up. They're propping, the, propping up themselves as modern-day apostles and prophets when they're actually crushing and hurting the body of Christ by doing that. And they'll be held accountable. We're all going to be held accountable for what, how we serve the Lord and what our motives were at the judgment seat of Christ. And um, if our motives were pure and for the Lord and we were doing it out of love for Him, then it'll surely be... Uh, purified and made into a crown but if we did it for the wrong reasons or selfish reasons or mi misguided reasons you're going to lose the crown that you had and you'll be saved as though by fire if you're even saved because if a modern a person thinks they're a modern day prophet or apostle they can't be in connection with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit's going to 
lead us into all truth if we listen to him. So these people are not being led by the Holy Spirit. They may have a lot of emotional and charismatic ways of speaking and having uh, their, their whatever their get-togethers they have and they they get where people are supposedly slain in spirit and just all kinds of stuff goes on, chattering and tongues and just a big confusing mess of, of uh, misunderstanding scripture. So I hope that if you're involved in any movement that has somebody telling you that they're the modern day apostle and prophet of God, you need to get away from them and get back to studying to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm going to attach how to rightly divide the word of truth, how to become a Christian, what does it mean to be born again, and our dispensations in the Bible today so that you can look, go into those links and you can learn quickly the truth and be able to come out of the false teaching that you've been in. I used to be in the charismatic church 30 years ago. I was in it when um, Kenneth Hagin was there and PTL and all before Jan and Paul Crouch died and just, just a bunch of big circus is what it was. I just didn't realize it and I knew something was wrong with what I was doing but I was going along with people that um, I knew at the time because I didn't know any better and I didn't study to show myself approved. I just went ahead and listened to what other people said and what people on YouTube said instead of checking it out for myself. Check me out. Check out what the, the article and where I got it. Check out whether or not it's biblical. You know, these things are important. So I hope that today, if you have seen that you're involved in a cult that has um, supposed modern-day prophets and apostles, then you need to get out of it. And even if it's a church that you love and they get all tingly and feel all this stuff that's the flesh and not the spirit, you need to get out of it. And if you're not saved, you need to trust the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, how that Christ died for our sins by shedding his precious holy blood, that he was buried, and he rose again according to the scriptures. If you believe that, if you believe that God lived a sinless life, he was fully God and fully man, he voluntarily went to the cross to pay for our sins because we could not pay for them ourselves. Our works and efforts are like filthy rags before God. So we come just trusting the blood of Jesus to cover our sins. His death, burial, and resurrection alone will save you. I pray that you'll trust that today, that you'll trust that Jesus Christ loves you. He wants to save you, and he's waiting for you to come and get saved and start your journey in the rightly dividing and learning how to read the Bible properly. And uh, the Holy Spirit will help you. All you have to do is ask. And you have to mean, have to mean it with a, a whole heart, wholeheartedly. He knows your motives. He knows what you're thinking. So he'll meet you where you are. I pray that this helped you today. I thank you for coming to my channel. I thank you for subscribing if you did. I thank you for any comments you leave. I thank you for um, your prayers and support. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.